Welcome to Electro Online, and in this video, we're going to summarize the phasor diagram concept. So again, we're dealing with an RCL circuit. It's a series circuit. We have a voltage oscillating uh, voltage supply. We have a voltage, the maximum voltage is 100 volts, which means the RMS voltage is 70.7 .7 volts. Let's say the frequency is 60 hertz, which is not important at this moment. Uh, we haven't shown you how to, we calculated X sub L and X sub C, but just assume, just to make the numbers easy, that the uh, inductive reactance is 300 ohms, the capacitor reactance is 200 ohms, and the resistance in the circuit is 200 ohms. So first, what we can do is draw a phasor diagram with the resistance and the reactances in the circuit. When we do that, we realize that the inductive reactance is head in phase, and that's not a very straight line here. Let me try that again. So here we go. Let's just draw it like this and like this. So the way we do that is we draw the resistance to the right, we draw the inductive reactance upwards and the capacitive reactance downwards so that they're all 90 degrees out of phase with one another. Notice that the capacitive reactance is first, then the resistance, I'm sorry, the inductive reactance is first, then the resistance, then the capacitive reactance. So this we said was going to be 300 ohms, this is 200 ohms, and this is 200 ohms. And again, this is just in this particular example. With other examples where the frequency is different and the sizes of the inductor and the capacitor are different, you will get different values. Remember, just for summary, that the X sub L is calculated by taking 2 pi F times the inductance of the uh, inductor, and the X sub C is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi F C, C being the size of the capacitor. That's how we find the X sub L and X sub C. The next step is you subtract X sub C from X sub L. So in this case, that gives you the total reactance. That gives you X, so X is equal to X sub L minus X sub C. So that's 300 ohms minus 200 ohms. So this is 300 ohms minus 200 ohms, which is equal to 100 ohms. So that gives you the total reactance of the circuit. And then you can see that you then take these two vectors, the total reactance, X, and the total resistance, R, and we add them up together vectorially. When we do that, we get the impedance. And so in this case, we add those two together. Those are like two vectors. And so we get Z, which is simply the sum, the vector sum of X and R the reactants and the resistance, and so to find the value of that, that's equal to the square root of r squared plus x squared. In this case, uh, when we do that, we have 200 squared plus 100 squared, and let's see here, in our particular case, squared plus 200 squared equals, take the square root, that was 223.6, well, that's good enough. So that in this case, that would be 223.6 ohms. Now, to find the current in the circuit, you can then say that I max, I max is equal to V max divided by the impedance Z. In this case, that would be 100 volts divided by 223.6 ohms. And that would give us 0 0.4472 amps. 0.4472 amps. Remember, that's the maximum current. If you want to find the RMS current, IRMS, that would be equal to VRMS divided by Z. And so in this case, we would take 70.7 volts divided by um, 223.6 ohms. And so then we get 0.3162. 0.3162 amps. So it gives us RMS, root mean square, which is the effective current in the circuit. This gives us the maximum current as it oscillates back and forth. Okay, now the next thing we do is we realize that the voltages across each component is simply proportional to the reactives and the resistance of each component. So in this case, let's assume that this here would be the voltage across the voltage across the inductor, which would be equal to uh, that would be the I across the circuit times X sub L. And then this here would be the voltage across the capacitor, V sub C, which would be I times X sub C. Now the I here can either be the maximum current or the RMS current, depending upon what you're looking for. 
Uh, typically, if you're looking for the maximum voltage of the oscillations, then of course you use IMAX. If you look for the root mean square voltage across these components, use the root mean square current. And then, of course, for the resistor, we have the voltage across the resistor right here, V sub R, which is simply the current times the resistance R from Ohm's law. All right. Also, the voltage across the whole circuit is going to be in this direction, along the direction of the impedance, like that. That would be voltage of the whole circuit. And notice that the current of the circuit is always in phase with the resistor like that. So this would be the current of the circuit. And notice in this case that the voltage across the whole circuit is ahead of, of the current by a certain amount. That's called the phase angle. So this here is known as the phase angle. And we can calculate the phase angle is taking the arctangent of the reactants divided by resistance. In this case, the reactance is 100 ohms, resistance 200 ohms, gives us an angle of 26.57 degrees. That would be the phase angle of that circuit. Notice that the voltage is ahead of the current, so since the voltage leads the current, it tends to be a, an inductive type circuit. Notice the saying, E lie the ice man. For an inductor, the voltage or EMF is ahead of the current. For a capacitive circuit, ice capacitor, the current is ahead of the voltage. So since the voltage is ahead of the current, it tends to be an inductive type circuit. Now, that is just a snapshot of what's happening in the circuit. As time goes on, a phase of diagram simply will rotate around. When it rotates around, notice, use the blue here, that then the voltage will be pointing, for the inductor will be pointing in this direction, that's V sub L. We have the voltage across the resistor, V sub R, and the voltage across the capacitor, V sub C, and then the voltage across the whole circuit, like that, that would be V. And then if we then line that up with our horizontal and vertical axis, so here's our horizontal axis, there's our vertical axis. Notice that now the whole phaser has turned through a particular angle. The angle here that it turned through is called omega t, omega t, that is how far it has turned in its phase. Also notice that this is still the phase angle that never changes. The phase angle is always phi, which is always equal to the same number right there. And now, if you want to find the instantaneous voltage of each component, you simply project that voltage onto the horizontal axis. So let me use green for that. So if we project this down right here, then this would be the instantaneous voltage, V across the inductor instantaneously. So that means at that very moment in time, that's the voltage across the inductor. Notice it's pointing in the negative direction. That means negative voltage. If you project the capacitor right here, this would be the voltage across the capacitor, V sub C at that moment, instantaneous. If I drop this down to the horizontal axis, this here would be the voltage across the resistor, instantaneous voltage. And if you want to know the voltage across the whole circuit, that's right here. And so that would be V across the circuit instantaneously. And notice that if we add the voltage of the inductor, the voltage of the capacitor, and the voltage of the resistor together, that will always give us the total voltage of the whole circuit. And so that's how we use phasor diagrams. A quick review, a look, quick summary. Hopefully that really seals it for you. Now hopefully you'll understand what phasors uh, on the phasor diagram is all about when it refers to our seal circuits. And that's how we do that.